All right, we're gonna pull right away. We're just gonna jump right into it. And I'm basically gonna be, hey everybody, I'm gonna be basically cleaning my plate here. You kind of saw a tease on the thumbnail. So here, let me just go ahead and start pulling this. I got Laura with me here live. Hi. Hi, Hi Laura. Thanks so much for joining today. Ooh, it's cleaning the plate, which is great. I've had this sitting here for a little bit because I had some pay it forward texture from last week and it's kind of been sticking around with various poles throughout the week. And oh, look at that. Oh, my plate is totally clean. I love this. Oh, this is great. Oh, so grungy. Now this is fun. This is gonna be, this is from this stencil from last week. So, oh, we're going to use that today again, too. I love this. How about that? First minute, one pull down. I'm going to clean my big plate, too. I was just kind of messing around, and I have lots of different patterns on this one. I know this is unusual because we're going to actually create prints, but before I can create prints, I just kind of wanted to kind of clean up what I've been playing with throughout the week. <clears throat> Today's today we're just going to create quick simple prints. I from time to time just have like 20 or 30 minutes and so that's the goal is to have like a 30 minute printing session. Oh I'm really loving this. This is good. I've got a lot of paper scabs here on the side so I'm picking those up as I pull. How is everybody today? Oh I love how the colors blended there. Fun. So satisfying to watch. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I'm oh, loving this. Yep. Grabbing this. Oh, and it's totally cleaning everything. Yep. I've got these paper scabs that are been like building up. And that happens when you leave stuff and pay it forward. From oh my gosh, look at these colors. Sorry. I keep interrupting myself. <laughs> I love printing. Oh, good Lord. Got to get that last little bit here. Last little bit up. Okay. Oh, wow. That is a big print. I love that. Look at all those colors. Hey, everyone. So I put a poll in earlier, and I was curious whether or not you gravitate toward brights or neutrals or subdued colors. Generally, I like to print. I like to print with all of them, quite honestly, but I love this pay it forward texture. What do you think, Laura? Oh, I think it's beautiful. And I love I love the idea that everything builds up like for future prints in a way. Yeah, and right here, I love how these colors kind of blended because they're kind of some of those like bright but yet subdued colors. And so they made a very interesting shade of purple, which is different from right here. So and different blues from like the bright, you can see the difference because it's got orange on top of it. And I like that. It's like kind of wrong, but right. Yeah, that's kind of cool. All right. Two down. We're just a few minutes in. How many minutes in are we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess just a couple. Amaya was asking what paper you're using. Oh, that was deli paper. So that's a great question. Um, just to get going here today, I'm going to be using cardstock. This is Nina Exact cardstock. This is what I use to print with. Also going to be using deli paper, but that's not it. I'm going to be using all sorts of things. At least that's the goal. I pulled apart some napkins. I've got a video on how to separate those layers so easily. It's like a two or three minute video. We'll link that in the description too, because these make great, great prints. Um, I have a really fun video that shows how this unique texture um, works on prints as well. So I may use this, I'm not 100% certain, but one of the things that I'm gonna play with today to create texture I've been getting this kind of, have any of you been getting this in your packages from like Amazon or anywhere else where you order stuff? And it's like kind of like tissue paper almost with this weird little, I don't know, kind of like recyclable material. But look at this kind of honeycomb pattern. Isn't that cool, Laura? It's so, so cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So instead of bubble wrap, I was getting this and I was like, well, that could make some interesting texture. So we're going to play with that a little bit. And I'm going to print with this part that I peeled off of it also and use that in um, some other projects. And I also have 
a piece of tissue paper that came in another package that was just scrunched up and that'll give some interesting texture on its own but that will also create um, something cool that we can use in a project. So let's get going. We're gonna jump right in. Today, if you are printing along, I'm gonna use some bright colors and we're gonna create some tone on tone prints to start. The goal here is to just get some color down and I'm gonna do quick pulls. We're not going for like letting this sit on the plate or anything like that. I'm gonna just kind of use my other plate to just get some of that off and we'll just do some pulls quick pulls get as much color down and lift as much color as we can cool i like that linda says it's a great reason to keep buying stuff the recyclable, yes. <laughs> <laughs> <not> recyclable. <laughs> she's right hey linda it's good to see you and i think i'm going to add a little bit more just because i don't want this to dry super super quick and it's okay, it doesn't have to be the whole plate too. Don't ever feel like you have to cover your entire plate. Now this is a really big piece, so I'm gonna use some jelly paper on this one. Let's see what we can pull up from that. And then here, I think I'm just gonna add maybe a different yellow. Let's go with this other bright one. I've got several bright colors here. Just gonna get some colors down. I'm using some Amsterdam Azo Yellow Light, and this is Lemon Yellow from Jerry's Artorama. That's their student grade. You want to use heavy bodied acrylics if you're doing this alongside me. It tends to get the best result. All right, let's go for some more paper. Susie so is asking if you roll back and forth or in one direction. Oh, that's a great question. Um, you want to actually go back and forth and you want to lift as you're doing it. So let's pull up what we can. You can see not much there. So we'll, I don't think there's much on here, but let's do a little tiny bit more. And I'll show you exactly. That's such a good question. Technique is really important. If you're just going back and forth, I'll show you what happens. See how you have those little moons? and you don't, you're not spreading it out. So you wanna go back and forth and lift as you're doing it to kind of spread out that paint. You can also kind of do it this way as well. It's not my favorite. I don't personally like doing that. I find that I get really weird marks. It's not wrong. It's just not, doesn't really work for me. All right, so let's take this piece and get some more. I don't worry about if it looks grungy, if it doesn't look perfect. This is just really, oh, I'm with you, Linda. I see she likes yellows and pinks mixed. Mm. Ooh, that's actually a good base print. I like that. I like it when there's like some stuff still on there. I don't think I'm gonna be able to pull anything up. So the reason that this didn't pull up completely is parts of it dried. So you've heard me talk, I had a feeling nothing was gonna come up there. When paint is wet and you add a dry layer to it, and the two bond together, you're able to lift it. Once it dries, it's gonna stay on the surface because you're adding a dried layer to it and you're not gonna be able to pull it up. So you can see here, this is really kind of cool. It's a great way to make colored uh, cardstock for yourself, just saying. Um, for those of you that are card makers, uh, you can get the best colored cardstock this way and you can make lots of sheets really quick. So now I have a couple different, different pieces here that we're gonna use as a base. Now we're gonna get, have some fun. All right, I'm gonna start with a darker shade of yellow. And we're gonna use more than just yellow today too, by the way. I'm gonna add some paint down, not a crazy amount, but enough. And Laura, should I use flowers, peacock, or Van Gogh swirls? Van Gogh swirls. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known. known. Alright, so I love this stencil by Elizabeth St. Hilaire in uh, at Joggles. So beautiful. And let's go ahead and add this piece of paper down. Now I have a lot of, um, I have some paint down there. It needs to be pretty wet, but you want to add a fair amount of pressure because I'm pulling through the stencil right now. Okay. 
Um, let's see here. Susie's asking, how do you know if you have soft or heavy body paint? It usually says heavy bodied acrylic on it. Yeah, and there was also like an earlier question, which I think is what you were saying a few minutes ago about how did you get to clean the plate with your with the pulse you were doing at the beginning? Oh, how did I get to that point? Okay, cool. I built up several layers, and if you watched last week's live, um, we actually built up lots of layers, let them sit so that all those layers dried together. And then we were able to pull them by adding that final wet layer, the white, which um, helps everything that's dried underneath. So like right now we have the base layer and now I have a new layer of uh, the stencil pattern, as you see here. So we'll just let that dry and then we'll take another pull um, because we have to add another wet layer before adding the final dry piece. Does that make sense, Laura? I felt, yeah, like, yeah. It was a, I felt like it was a science equation a little bit. <laughs> so it makes a lot of sense. It's really cool how you can work with layers in many different yeah. ways. To get sweet. Yeah, and I think what we'll do instead of using white, maybe we'll use magenta for that one. I'm just going to let that dry for a second. So while that's drying, let's go ahead and just pull. This is just plain color, but you can see that I let this sit. And so now that everything's dried, it'll just kind of pull up whatever was there. Ooh, look at that magenta that was paid forward from before. Fun. So this is a good kind of like base print, just like these. Um, and then now we're just gonna keep printing and adding to them. <clears throat> so should I keep doing yellow on yellow or should I just go for other colors? You decide, Laura. What have you got there? Go for other colors. I have all sorts of stuff. It's hard to... I pulled out just some bright, some things that I like to print with and some things that kind of go together. Um, I wanted to make sure that I didn't have like anything. Let's see, what little guys do I have here? No, let's do, let's do turquoise. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it in the back. I was like, go for that. <laughs> Let's do something like unexpected, right? Now, I yeah. always get this like extra little paint up there and I just kind of smash it down. So you don't want to not use it. It just ends up beating up and then I pull it off. All right. And I'm going to need, because this will be interesting on the yellow, because we'll get some, I think, really pretty green, right? Yep. Okay. So let's add some peacock feathers. That should be kind of fun. Now this is a mask. There we go. And this is also Elizabeth St. Hilaire over from Joggles. Everything's linked in the description. That's kind of fun. And let's take that really big piece that we have. So we have this yellow under color, right? We're going to get, I actually, before I do this, I want to add just like a little tiny bit of variation. I got to do this quickly because this is drying because it's a really thin layer. Sorry, I couldn't not. Now, you got to be careful because me doing this, I'm actually pulling paint away as I'm rolling over it. So I just have to be kind of aware of that. Does that depend on the paint being dry or will it happen anyway? Say that again? Would, does that depend on the paint on, paint underneath being a little bit dry now, or will it happen anyway? You pulling the the paint as you're adding the second layer. As I you add that paint down, and then I have a drier brayer coming over it, so it's going to start to lift some of what you have. The more the more you roll, the more it lays it down. And then when the brayer is out of paint to lay down, it's going to start to subtract. I see. So if you ever have too much paint, it's a great way. Like I do this a lot when I grunge. I get try, go for my intentional grunge borders. I come back in with my brayer kind of not going all the way to the edge. And I start to pull some of that paint away in the middle. Um, which is a really fun, we'll have to do that another day, play with those intentional techniques. 
Now, because I have light layers, I can very easily pull these up quickly. I'm not worried about leaving them sit. I do want to pull up stuff though. So I may come back in here. Ooh, that's kind of fun. Ooh, you can see some of it was drying. Oh, that's kind of fun. Look at those interesting colors because it's not really quite turquoise. It's more emerald turquoise, right? Yeah, it's so pretty. Yeah. I was asking how you adjust if you have only soft body paint, if you don't have heavy weight, heavy body acrylic. Meaning like what What brand? Uh, I don't know. Maybe she can let us know. Yeah. Like what brand paint? I'm adding some transparent white that's not like bright, bright white just to cut these areas that have dried because I want to pull some of this up so that I can just leave the stencil pattern below. And I'm not worried about getting this just right. This is just going to be a piece that I layer on top of. All right. I gotta say this stencil is so pretty. It is, right? She has an entire peacock kind of line, um, which is so cool. Ooh, look at that grunge. Let's see if you like it. I know. Sorry, I'm enabling. I'm enabling y'all today. <laughs> Is it the first step to getting back to crafting? <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah, it's been funny. I've been playing with alcohol inks a lot, but ever since doing these lives with this, I've been printing, sitting down and printing a little bit throughout the week, which has been fun because it's been a while. Ooh, that's really pretty. And I love the softness of it because this would be just that nice little extra grunge that works great in collage. Um, somebody did ask me on a past live, I think it was last week's live in the comments, what to do with all these extra prints. So I'm just gonna kind of sneak peek a little something for you guys. You'll have to wait till the end because I'm gonna tell you, I have a little something coming for you. All right, so this is kind of fun, right? Now I think, do I wanna layer or do I wanna just pull up? What do you think? Decisions, decisions, decisions. Let's go ahead and pull that up. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit just to make sure that that stays nice and pretty. And let's move to this one. All right. I know uh, you probably tell I'm working with multiple plates. I can't not work with multiple plates. I used to work just with one and it just took forever to just sit here. I would get so frustrated in constantly needing to wait. Um, so that's why I like to print with two plates. So I think I'm gonna add a different color to this. Let's add magenta. I'm gonna wanna be able to pull up some of this cause right now it's pretty solid yellow. Um, so let's see what we can add to here. Because because I can see a lot of the through the plate here, that tells me that I'm going to be able to see my magenta. So I'm just going to kind of let that sit there. Backwards, like in layers, it's like as opposed to when you work, I don't know, on a graphic, right. I guess, right? Exactly, exactly. And I think in order to pull some of this up, we're going to use um, textured materials. So maybe I will just layer this too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good Lord, that was difficult. <laughs> Options, options. I know. It's like thinking on the fly here. And you have to because the top is drying right now, right? So let's add just a little bit more just to re-wet it. And I'm going to do this quickly. So I'm going to go for some go-to go -to pieces. I want to pull out some texture, something that I know is going to just take that paint with it a little bit. Next, I'm going to use, this is one of my favorites, egg cartons. Or, the gel printer's best friend. They do a great job of pulling. It's not pulling enough though. So let's use some drywall tape right in this area. Like using things that you can find around the house and yeah, yeah. with what you've got. It's really cool. Yeah, I love this drywall tape because it adds just a real subtle 
kind of little canvasy kind of feel, but it does a really good job at breaking stuff up when you want to break something up. And that's how I start to think about some of the materials. You see that it's kind of lifting some of that. I don't know if that's visible. Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Yeah. So this is still kind of wet, but you can kind of see, this is the, don't do this at home. <laughs> I'm going to let that dry for just a little bit. Just I want this to dry before adding white to it, and then we're going to pull that, and that'll be nice. All right. So what are you thinking here, Laura? I think it's gorgeous. I'm trying to think of what color. I think I want to add a variety of colors. So let's go ahead and add some yellow. Hmm. Yeah, we'll add a little bit of yellow. Feel free to shout out any colors. <laughs> yeah, I was when I saw the lime green, I was like, yay, add a bit of white. Or are you gonna put white at the end? Yes, absolutely. You know what? Let's add let's add some contrast. Um, before I brayer those out. Betty was asking, is deli paper like is I'm sorry, I missed that. Is deli paper like box paper? Is it the same thing as box It's paper? not exactly the same. Um, somebody from Germany actually answered this for me in a comment on a live. She said that uh, it's what's well, kind of like sandwich paper. So they have something called Butter Butterbrot Papier in German. In Germany, <laughs> sorry, um, <laughs> and and that is more like which is which is basically deli paper. That is kind of like what it is. It's something they wrap sandwiches in, or kind of like the paper that they put um, French fries in. Sometimes Europe oh. fries are very, yeah. Does that make sense? Laura's in England and she's from Italy, so I don't know if you have deli paper yourself. Do you? I mean. I guess we do like to wrap, I don't know, like uh, cold cuts and things like that, I imagine. Yes, yes. But well, yeah. that's like kind of like butcher paper, though, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's, that's yeah, I'm trying to think when I was living in Germany, whether or not that was what they did. Um, so it's thin, it's, it's, I don't know, there's waxy deli paper and non waxy deli paper. Um, it's great for collage. It's not tissue paper. Tissue paper is much lighter and, you know, would kind of dissolve if you had water kind of on it a little bit. So I don't know if that helped. But I mean, you can just find it as deli paper, like on, I guess, on Amazon or... Yes, I have it linked in the description. I have both sizes linked. Um, right now, what I'm doing is because this is like so straight a line, I, it feels kind of awkward. So to kind of blend this in, I am just using, you know, the best tool that you have in the house that's free, your finger, and just kind of pulling a little bit aside there. And I want that black to kind of dry before brayering out these colors. So let's go ahead and do the yellow, the lighter first, then the green. This kind of feels nice. I'm going to leave a little bit of... Um, daylight between those. I'm, I've got a piece of scrap paper off to the side that I'm brayering on. I think what I'm going to do up top though is add some of the, and I'll do it here, the magenta. And you can see that as I come over, I'm pulling some of that yellow away, which is totally fine. It's giving that really nice little kind of orangey kind of color. And with the brown, it's going to, the green, this Magenta is not going to be the prettiest color, but that could be interesting, though. All right. And then I think, oh, we'll do cerulean blue up top. There we go. So what's everybody doing this weekend? Creating? I'd love to know if you're creating with us. Yeah, there were some comments earlier of people saying they'd be crafting along. Somebody was making oh, cards, I think. So somebody said they would just hang out. Is there cool. any paper to get with pretzels? I don't know, but I would like I would really like a pretzel right now. Yes. Yes. Yeah, now I want a pretzel. <laughs> yes, it is. That is the same kind of paper. 
Yes. All right, that's kind of cool. I like that. That's gonna be hard to pull up. Let I'm gonna have to add white. Make sure I don't add too thick a layer of white, Laura. It's your job. I'll make sure. <laughs> <laughs> this one has a little, I think, too much yellow on the undercoat, but it's nice and subtle, so it'll be good. Maybe what I'll do is I'll use one of these lighter prints that we have. Maybe not. I'll use a white piece. Oh, too many decisions. All right, here we go. So the goal today is really to create as many as I can. Um, I just wanted to kind of create some easy prints, nothing that's too complicated. And if you don't have stencils, you don't need stencils. Go raid your pantry. Go find the bags that are holding your onions and your limes and your garlic. They make great stencils. Um, raid the garage, see what interesting things you have to make texture in there. Uh, what else? Name some more, Laura. Your garden, you had some beautiful Ooh. prints with leaves and things like that. Yes, leaves make great prints. Um, you know, all you got to do is just kind of press it in here. I shouldn't be doing this, but I am. Just press it in and that creates a very cool pattern, you know, that you can pull from egg cartons, things like that. Um, I think I need to add more. Sorry, I'm going to brayer that out. Scrunch it up, right? Say it again. Plastic wrap or like... Oh, yes. Great idea. Plastic wrap. And somebody was asking, uh, so Janice was asking, can I use the colors on my jelly bag? Mm, interesting question. Okay, so I was asked this question earlier also in a comment. Um, they were asking about how to season a plate with, so that their ink pads, their dye-based ink pads wouldn't beat up. And unfortunately, um, when you use water-based materials, it's really hard to not have this bead up on here. So you're gonna get that. It's not gonna be as smooth as heavy bodied acrylics um, because it just, the water just tends to beat up on this kind of a surface because it's a non-porous surface. So oxides though, oxides work beautifully. So I would try those. So watercolor, my suggestion is to just go ahead and go for it. You're gonna get a different look. It's not gonna be as crisp as this, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to work. So I would just experiment and experiment with the amount of water. Find your level. All right. This actually doesn't feel, this feels actually ready to pull. Let me let it sit for another minute. I get a little impatient. I'm way more patient when it's just me. <laughs> But it's like I want to show you all. Let's pull these paper scabs off. All right. Uh, Stephanie is asking, you let the first layer dry, then you roll white over and pull while the white is wet, or do you leave the white to dry? I guess you just set it aside to dry. Yeah, here. I Oh, I set this aside to dry because now I'm going to go ahead and add white. And this is transparent mixing white. I want to add white, white. So... It's probably right in front of me. Yes, it is. Yeah, and I guess the question was like, are you gonna let this dry or are you pulling while the white is wet? Um, I'm Because there are dry layers underneath, in order to get the dry layers to bond with the wet, to bond with the dry layer on top, I'm gonna need to let it sit. So in the meantime, I'm letting this kind of dry right now. And then um, I will pull this and then I'll come back to this one. So the key, because I'm live right now, is I want to make sure that I am not adding too thick a layer. Um, you want to have enough of a wet layer that it, it allows everything to bond. But if you have too much, then it'll just take you A, forever to be able to actually pull the print. Um, and I'm going to use this, this paper this might give us some interesting texture too. Sorry. Um, and what was I saying? I'm, I lost my train of thought. 
uh, the amount of white paint you are gonna put on the like here on the plate in order to get mm. and if you have too thick too much paint you'll get those little ridges that you'll see and um you'll end up pulling when you do your pull You'll have nothing but texture and a blob, and you won't be able to pull everything because that rest of the paint will remain behind. So does that make sense? Yep, totally. Okay, good. All right, so let's go ahead and pull this one. Ooh, ooh, I'm loving this already. And it's okay, because right now what's happening is this was not dry enough. So whichever one is weaker, won't get the paint. So the, the plate is stronger right now than the paper because when we add something wet to paper, it weakens the fibers. So because this is weaker and this is stronger, the paint's staying behind. It sounded scientific, but I don't know if that was scientific. Oh, totally. And Laura should know. She has a PhD in astrophysics. She's literal rocket scientist. <laughs> I have her channel linked below. It's no, it's not rocket science stuff. It's crafting and she does beautiful work. Oh, I love this. This is the Van Gogh swirls, Laurel. Laurel. <laughs> Sorry, Laura. <laughs> beautiful. I love so, the colors and the layers. It's kind of cool because I can see like the bubble wrap here, which gives me that interesting texture. And I am totally envisioning just taking this right here as a card having that little tiny bit of pop of pink and then like a sentiment right over here um, or even like a couple die cuts some flowers or something there's so many cool things you can do with that love that okay this is still wet so I'm just going to continue I'm going to keep going with um, some of these that I made I'm going to add some other stencils now and then I want to add something to this Got this really fun kind of scallop rose stencil also from Joggles. This is one of Joggles' own stencils. This is kind of fun. I love doing this one, but doing it in black. So I think I only want to do a little piece of it though. I don't want to do the whole thing. So you can see that when you're playing, it's really what it is. It's just play. All, that's all you're doing is just playing. So adding this down and I'm gonna take, actually let's take this one because this one I feel needs some contrast. So let's add it right here. And I'm gonna actually not grab all of it. I'm just, while that's wet, I'm just lifting a little bit here for some different interest. It's oh, kind of fun. I know some of you are probably going, oh no. I love that. That's good. And let's do the same here. This is how you can get lots of different cool little pieces. Nobody said you had to use the entire plate, right? Yeah, I love that. And I love having pieces, especially on deli paper, that where you're just building it. You know, it's you're trying to get those remnants up and you're just building little pieces here and there. I find that these papers where you're just adding to constantly create some of the coolest prints. And those are wonderful to, to collage with. So I'm gonna pull this up. Look at all that. That's kind of fun, right? Now it's a lot of black, right? Let that dry. This has been like my favorite little thing here. Sorry if that's loud. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. <laughs> it's my little secret weapon. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to work up here. So we've got that kind of black stuff going on down there. Hmm. Let's try some. Noni was asking what the paint you have on the right of your plate. I guess what the color name is. 
there is a blue paint tube on the well i guess for us it for you it would be the left ah no right no, I don't no, see one. this one yeah. okay turquoise blue thank you but you're welcome by amsterdam all right so i don't have any blue yet of just this i'm just gonna add a little bit here and a little bit down here now you can see some of that black was still kind of not dry so i just like ended up lifting it which means that it's on my brayer right now so i'm just going to kind of roll that off because i don't want to keep grunging up everything this is why i also use a couple multiple brayers just giving the paint sometimes a chance to dry um on here and then we will go ahead and uh, let's see here. Blue. Got that. Let me add some rose matter. This can be pretty. I don't know if this is dry though. Let's pull some up. And where's my testing piece? Oh, nothing's coming up. Great. Oh, this is going to be so, like, contrasty. Yeah, I'm excited. I have no idea what this is going to look like. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need to pull up some color, though, because that was a pretty thick, and I can see that it's wet. So let's just go ahead and pull up some of that. And I'm going to need to pull some of that pattern up. This is a really fun new stencil for me. Ooh. Also by Elizabeth St. Hilaire. I have a lot of her stencils. I have some inspired by Klimt, some Peacock, some um, various types of patterns. I have a lot of, I, I like a lot of the stencils that Joggles has. I like a lot of the stencil girl as well. Um, got some of Karen Tamir's stencils. I used some of those last time. She's got some really cool designs. All right, I need to pull up some of this. So, a little bit. You know what? Let's actually just let it dry and then we'll pull the whole piece up. Yeah, that'll be fun. It'll be a little bit of a dark band in the middle, but that's okay. I don't normally shift around so much when I'm printing by myself, but for you guys, it's different. So I still feel like this is a little wet, so some of this may stay behind, but that's okay. Yeah. How do you tell that it's wet when you have the paper on top? Great question. So. Like when I put my hand on top here, actually maybe I'll shift to a smaller stance, a smaller plate in the meantime. When you put your hand on top and it's cool, that means it's wet. Um, as it dries, and you, I can tell like up here it's dry, but down here it's cool. So um, as it dries, it warms up. Laura was on screen with me earlier for about a half hour before we went live and I was um, laying the paint down on the two that we pulled right at the beginning. And uh, I could definitely feel when it was um, going, uh, getting dry. So I think, because I didn't want this to be a very, very long live, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this, just do another real quick small one, pull this one, and uh, I'm gonna probably be done because this is really what it's about. It's about having a few minutes being able to do something creative, right? Now, if you're interested in learning more, I have a, a free class that I'm doing. It's gonna be on Zoom so that you can jump on and show me what you're doing. So if you wanna actually work alongside, you can do that, as well as um, kind of troubleshoot in the moment. Oh, that's actually working. Yeah, I need that to wait. Now I'm grabbing this one that has a little bit of stuff that we paid for last time. 
And let's go ahead and add a completely contrasting color that's totally dry. So now let's add some orange to that. Two colors that do not normally mix. And I think on the other side, we use some yellow. This is gonna be fun. I'm mesmerized, like. <laughs> <laughs> I know Laura wishes she was printing. I told her she could print it. <laughs> and then I'm going to use this peacock. This should be fun. Fun little print. Here's this is that one that we did earlier where we only got a partial. And I'm just going to pull just a little bit here, and then I'm going to come back in and pull more on the other side. This is all just about layering. Sorry. Ooh, look at that. Go ahead. No, I was going to ask, how do we know about the, get to know about the free class you were mentioning? Oh, great. Thank you. Um, I have a link in the description, and maybe Laura can pop that in the description as well, uh, just to... Um, uh, it's for my um, email list, and there I send art prompts, and I send other news about events and different things to kind of get you creating in the moment. And I'll be sending all the all the information about that there. See how we start to build that up? I love that. Oh, this is a cool. This is a cool print. Oh, I like that. That's gonna be pretty. I think what I'd like to do on this one is just have it be white. So let that, that's a real thin layer. Let's go ahead and add white to this because this has dried. And we'll go from there. I gotta agree with Therese that says that you are the gel print queen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's so sweet. <laughs> Now you can see that this is too much paint, right? This is just when I'm first doing this out. So if you ever notice that that's happening to you, that is a sign that you have too much paint. You don't want it to be so rid, not all those ridges. So we're just gonna kind of sprayer that all out and gonna clean off my brayer. So I have some grunge on that. So that kind of made that white kind of grungy. So what happens when you go live? All right. All right. This is fun. I love this. I love creating lots and lots of different prints. So while this is kind of drying, let me just add some light to this. And then I'll show you really quickly some of the prints that we've taken, just to give you an idea. You can sit here and pull print after print after print and create some really cool stuff in just 30, 40 minutes. Oh, this is transparent mixing white. And I think this is really cool because, I mean, during the week, it can be hard to find time to do things. And it feels like the time we have is not enough to do much. But exactly, you, you did a lot. Exactly. And I, it's not uncommon for me to sit for 20, 30 minutes and just take one or two uh, layered prints or print, do like a big session and print a lot. So I think what I'm going to do here is just use paper for this one. And it's really easy. I don't, I don't need to cut my paper down all the time. So I find that I just print on one side if I'm using a five by seven plate and then I'll print on the other side for the other one. And I think what I'll do right now is take this pole, this should be dry, this pole right here, fun. Let's see how this works. Now I've never, I've never worked with this paper before. This is like the paper from the packaging. So I'm expecting a crinkle look because it was crinkled to begin with, which is what I'm getting. Oh, that's kind of cool. Kind of like crackle so that's going to be an interesting background for a mixed media piece and it's leaving all this stuff for the next print um, which is awesome i love that now i'd be curious to know what it looks like if i were to let it dry a little bit more 
Oh, this is very satisfying. I'm loving all the textured that it has from the different little grungy things that we've done. Ooh, fun. So much going on. Yeah, that's actually really fun. I like this because it's like kind of like broken, almost like shattered, mm -hmm. which is which is cool. I've never used this paper before. So this is just recycled ways to use your recycled materials. Now I'm really loving this color combination that's going on here. This is the um, the rose matter with the yellow with a little bit of that grungy black on top. Like this is really pretty. This would be a really cute background for a card right here. Just kind of like that crinkled little bit with a little bit of black splatter on it. Yeah. And these are the things that we are going to do. I'm excited. I'll tell you about next week. All right, let me just pull this really quick. Ooh, simple, quick. Ooh, look at those peacock feathers. What do you think, Laura? I can't think right now. It's too pretty. <laughs> Beautiful. That. And that was quick. That was really quick. All right, let me throw these to the side here really quick. Let me do this one last one. I mean, this is a card, like just this, right? Simple, quick, easy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I'm digging. I love cerulean blue. Ooh. Oh, this is making me so happy. Oh, oh no. Oh no. It wasn't, it wasn't dry. <laughs> Let's come at it from the other side. All right. So my paint is not quite dry here. So, and this is what you do. You guys that all get one of these little fans. I'll have to link the fan that I have. I got it off Amazon. It's like $10, <laughs> but it's so great. And you charge it. So there's no batteries, which is great. Just let that dry so that we can pull up that final middle. Cause this is actually really pretty. I don't want this to not work. Well, there's nothing I can do bad. It's leaving my paper behind, so it's not through the magic of television. I'm just going to have to <sighs> have a little paint scab there. Look at how pretty that is. I love this. I love this variation right here, and this is really cool. So there's a little bit of yellow, kind of uh, yellow and red that was paid forward from another print, which is really popping off of the cerulean blue because they are, comp you know, orange is complementary to blue. So that's really nice. So you have opaque paint sitting on top of opaque paint. So because this isn't transparent, you it didn't turn green. And that's what's really cool about that. I love this. Now, if you are watching the replay, I've got a playlist for you right here. And that is going to be, or not a playlist, it's actually a link to next week's live. And we are going to take prints that we've made like this, and we're going to actually turn them into projects. I know you guys have been asking me to do this for forever. So that is what we're going to do. And it's not just going to be cards. So it'll be a lengthier, a lengthier live, and we may have to pull a print or two, but it's probably just going to be a variety of projects in addition to other things that I've done and we'll be layering as well and doing cool things.